Oklahoma's win over Houston wasn't pretty. The Sooners offense sputtered, punting eight times and getting outgained 318 to 249. Sometimes it's about surviving and advancing folks. And it was deja vu for Alabama against South Florida. The Tide struggled for 50 minutes before erupting for 28 points in the final 10. And it's a reminder that even powerhouses can have off days until they don't. Oregon's hard stopping season continues for the second straight week. The Ducks found themselves in a fight. This time it took a clutch 25 yard field goal as time expired to edge out Boise State just one week after a tighter than expected win over Idaho. Now, Lugs, out of all these struggles and close calls, which one do you find the most concerning? Uh, for me, it is Oklahoma, and I'm concerned because they can't seem to find their stride just yet offensively, and they can't do what at the core of their offense, and that is to run the football. Just 75 yards on the ground versus Houston, and 14 of those came from Jackson Arnold, the quarterback. You mentioned the punts, the inability to further drives. Uh, just 4 of 14 on third down. That's just not good enough, and I'm concerned because this is a football team that's getting ready to go into the meat of their schedule. And Brent Venables knows as well as anybody that up front is where you better be really good to survive in that conference. And I don't think Oklahoma is where they want to be yet. Mm -mm. One other team that's not really good up front yet is Alabama. I was watching the game last week for South Florida, and my first thought, I texted it to our producer, Amy. I said, Alabama has an O-line problem. And yes, I get it. Caden Proctor, their six foot seven, 350 pound tackle has been injured. But they had a backup tackle at right tackle who struggled. Uh, they were up 14-13 with 10 minutes left. They moved Tyler Booker, who's a prominent guard, out to tackle, and he played really well. But the question is, how long will this be sustained? Alabama has struggled the last several years with the offensive line. They're still trying to get through some injury issues, but if you start getting in the meat of the schedule, that problem could be exposed. Well, I think the other thing, too, Sam, that, that's problematic, it's 13 penalties and three turnovers, mm -hmm. right? That's very uncharacteristic of the University of Alabama. But I almost feel like if we went into a time machine and we went back one year ago last week, this was the exact same discussion that we were having about, about Alabama, but only it was worse because you were questioning the quarterback position. Remember that? They go down to South Florida and Tampa. They throw Tyler Buckner in there. He can't complete a forward pass. They struggle, and they win the game 17-3. to Lo and behold, they just slowly got better and better and better, and the offensive line improved. Jalen Milrow obviously improved, and they found themselves in the college football playoffs. So I think there's plenty to correct for Alabama. There's no doubt, but I still think they'll be just fine. Colorado faced Nebraska on Saturday and the Buffaloes were down 28 to nothing at halftime and the game how never felt really competitive. The Buffalo scored a late touchdown so things looked a little less worse but that didn't help much. So let's hear from Coach Prime on his O-line problems. I feel like we got the right guys. Um, you may see a shake something up a little bit. Phil Lodehold is a wonderful offensive line coach. Pat does a tremendous job in calling plays, as he did the first game. So you just can't take a snapshot of one game and not understand the first game. Well, we have over 500 yards of offense. I ain't hear all these questions. But I understand it comes with the territory. Now it's a little bit of deja vu for the Buffs. Colorado had tough, had a tough rushing attack a season ago, and this season looks to be a little bit of the same. The Buffs' air raid is soaring, but their ground game, it's stuck in Boulder. As conference play looms, this offensive imbalance could be their Achilles heel. Now, the numbers speak for themselves. The math isn't quite mathing, but Coach Prime seems to think something else. So, Pete, am I missing something here? Well, there's an old saying, Victoria, you can't microwave an offensive line. And when you rebuild your entire offensive line from the transfer portal, or they have obviously five-star left tackle Jordan Seaton, you have all new bodies there. You need the crock pot. You need it to simmer. You need them to come together. Instead, Colorado has rolled out a whole new unit, and they've looked like it. They are dead last in the nation in rushing 1.67 yards per game. And they look disheveled, much like last year when they gave up more sacks than anyone in the country. 
And Pete, to your point about not being able to microwave an offensive line, uh, we heard Coach Prime talk to his team about, man, offensive line is a mentality. He talked to them over the last couple days after they got really embarrassed by Nebraska up front. But the issue is you can't microwave a mentality either. That mentality has to be developed all offseason. That mentality of being more physical and tougher uh, has, to be, has to be ingrained in you. You can't just flip a switch and say, I'm going to be, now be this big, bad, uh, run-blocking offensive line. Last year, Colorado was bottom three in, run, in rushing. This year, only two weeks in, they're still at the bottom in rushing. And so, of course, your quarterback's going to get sacked when you're a one-dimensional team. Let me take this up. One-dimensional team, not two. One dimension. Because every defense is going to be able to tee off and get after your quarterback, especially when your offensive line is showing that they're soft. Well, I, I think the discussion when we talk Colorado is we need to remove number 12 and number two, all right, from the equation. Mm -hmm. So if, if – if, Shadur and Travis Hunter are not involved in the in the, the equation here. Then you ask yourself, how many how many games would Colorado win? Because this problem isn't about two or three players. It's about the entirety of the roster. They're not good enough. And yeah. they're certainly not good enough in the trenches on both sides of the football. And when you look at their schedule, look at this schedule right here. Almost all of their road games are against the better teams in the conference out, outside of really Utah and Oklahoma State. But this is going to get harder, not easier. And so if you can't run the football, Sam, to your point, you know, you become so one-dimensional that people just start pinning their ears back and they start coming after the quarterback and it strains the offensive line. Your quarterback's going to have a hard time staying upright. But to me, this is a bigger picture of loft. I don't know if you guys know what loft stands for. Lack of freaking talent. <laughs> because in, in many areas, they don't have the players that you need to have to be an upper tier, upper level program. Does that mean they'll never be that? No, I'm not saying that at all, but that's the reality right now. Yeah, and that accountability is a big thing as well, too. Well, Colorado takes on Colorado State this weekend. The Buffs have won six starts against the Rams. However, they are visiting Fort Collins for the first time since 1996 on Saturdays. Hey!